Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering Affinity Photo. We finished our videos in the develop persona of Affinity Photo and we're finally over in the photo persona. And in this video, I want to discuss layers. It's very important that you have a thorough understand of layers and how layers work for you to continue learning about how to use Affinity Photo. L with layers, you're able to do a lot of different things. You could take maybe a selection from one layer and have it added to another layer. You're able to blend parts of a layer with another layer and you're able to even add an adjustment layer that will do a specific type of adjustments to all the layers below it. So layers are an integral part of the photo persona of Affinity Photo and you really have to understand what layers do and what you could do with them. Now to begin our discussion, I'm going to uh, refer over to this right hand panel and over here under the layers tab, you'll see our layers. And as you can see, I have clouds. But below the clouds layer, you'll see there's a lighthouse layer, but there's no hint of that layer being shown. That's because it's akin to having a photograph of, let's say, a lighthouse sitting on your desk, and you take a photograph of clouds and put it directly on top of that lighthouse photograph. You're not going to see the lighthouse at all because the cloud photograph is on top of it. Layers are the exact same way. I have this lighthouse photograph on the bottom and the clouds photograph on top. Now, with the wonders of technology, I could look at this lighthouse photograph by unchecking this box next to the clouds layer. And when I do that, I'm turning that layer off. It's as though that layer isn't there anymore. And we could see the lighthouse below it. Now, I mentioned in the intro that Layers come in handy because you'd like to take sometimes parts of one layer and put them on parts of another layer. And you can see where I'm going with this. We have these clouds here, which are nice, but I have this lighthouse, which is nice, but the sky isn't. So I'd like to take the clouds from the top layer and somehow get them added to this bottom layer. And there's a lot of different ways you could do that. You could do it with a selection. You could select the sky in this old layer or the bottom layer and then have that selection be transferred to the clouds layer and use those clouds in the ultimate image that we're going to create of the lighthouse with these clouds. Another way is you could do blending options and there's a thing in Affinity Photo called blend ranges. And just as a quick demo, I'm going to show you how to do this with blend ranges. And it's just going to be an overview. We're going to get into this a little more deeper in subsequent videos and talk about other types of layers in Affinity Photo. Again, in this video, I just kind of want to give you a taste of layers and give you an idea of what you could do with them. So we have this lighthouse layer on the bottom and the clouds layer on the top. And I want to somehow get these clouds added to the lighthouse layer. Again, a number of different ways we could go about doing this. And the way I'm going to show you is using blend ranges. So what we're going to do is we're going to be selected and have the clouds layer active. And you can tell it's selected on the clouds layer. We're going to click on this little gear right here. And you can see it says blend ranges when I hover over it. And when I click on it, you'll see this blend options dialog box comes up. Now, of course, the sky in the lighthouse picture is blue. So we want to affect the blue pixels because we want to get rid of those blue pixels that are in the lighthouse layer and use these pixels that are in this clouds layer instead. So we're going to go to this drop down and we're going to click on blue. So we want to affect the blue pixels in the bottom layer, in the lighthouse layer. So we want to look at the underlying composition ranges because the underlying composition is the lighthouse layer. And what I want to do is go over to the left hand side and click on these are the darker pixels and pull this down. 
And as I pull it down, you'll see that the lighthouse layer is starting to come through. And so you can see that we have the lighthouse there. So I very effectively kind of blended out the uh, clouds layer bottom part and allowed that lighthouse layer to come through. But it's not perfect. If we look at it very closely, you can see it's almost like a transparency, like we had an overhead projector with transparencies. And we could see part of both layers now. Looks better, but it's still not perfect. Well, that's where layer masks come in. With a layer mask, you're able to more precisely mask in or out part of the layer that you're working on. Now, to add a layer mask, we want to add it to this clouds layer. We're going to go down here, and you can see right here this little rectangle with the circle in the minute, middle of it. That says mask layer. We'll click on that, and you'll notice that now added to the clouds layer is this mask. So we want to be selected on that. And masks are very confusing to newcomers to uh, applications such as Affinity Photo, but actually they're very simple. What you need to remember is normally, probably 80% of the time, you're either going to paint on the mask with solid black or solid white. And black hides and white reveals. Now we have a white mask. You can see it's white. But as I look at the image, we see that part of that top clouds layer is showing through. So I want to hide that. So we want to paint on this mask. So make sure we're clicked on the mask. We want to paint directly on the mask in black. Because remember, black hides. So we're going to go up to our color tab and make sure that we have black as the foreground color. Just hit the X on the keyboard and you'll make black the foreground color. Then get a brush. You can hit B for the keyboard shortcut for brush. And go up to brush attributes and make sure that the opacity is at 100% and flow is at 100%. And hardness will vary from image to image. And I'm going to just for the sake of this demonstration use a huge brush to save some time. Now I'm painting again directly on the mask and I'm painting black. And you can see when I do that, I am eliminating all the pixels from the top cloud layer. I'm just having the pixels from the bottom layer come through that bottom layer. So very easily could get this in there. Now, of course, you'd resize your brush with the bracket keys. And you could come in here and get it a little more precise. If you feel that it's bleeding through on the light tower, which it is a little bit, you could come in here and paint that as well. And of course, take your time and do a wonderful job. And you could see, though, that we're already just in the few seconds I've worked on this image, made it look really very realistic and relatively um, very easily done. So layers are very, very powerful in Affinity Photo. So you could see now we still have that clouds layer on top. And if I turn it off, you could see that we have the original layer on the bottoms. Nothing's changed with that original layer. We've just taken part of the clouds layer and added it to it. As simple as that. Now there's another type of layer called an adjustment layer. And that's what we're going to be talking about in our next couple videos. You can see on this tab here next to the Layers tab is Adjustment. We have all these different adjustments that we can do. And when you want to add one of these adjustments, let's say you want to add an HSL adjustment. If I click on this and add it to the image, it gets added on top of the layer stack. And you can see there's an HL, HSL Shift Adjustment. And here's our controls for it. So I could come in here and maybe add some saturation to the image, like crazy amount of saturation or something like that. So that we'll be talking about in our next video as we continue with the photo persona of Affinity Photo. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.